I know. I know. It's it's bad. Okay. Okay. I'll let you go ahead and play these. Yeah. I don't think he cares. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Church of Spokane, where we join together to create a nourishing liberal religious home and to champion justice, diversity, and environmental stewardship in our wider world. Or, as we like to say in short, to create community, find meaning, and work for justice. We also like to begin each Sunday by welcoming all that you bring with you to this space, all of your uniqueness, your unique beliefs, your background, your lifestyle, your experiences, your differences, all that helps make you who you are. And I, I took a pause at the first service, and I'll do so again now, to parse this a little bit, because I, I know I say, say it rather ritualistically each Sunday, but these terms uh, that I use, uh, your unique beliefs, your background, your lifestyle, your experiences, your differences, are often the things that we find uh, are excluded in religion. They're the reasons that people can't be with us. So I, I say these not to sort of repeat a laundry list every Sunday, but because these words very have, have a lot of meaning in our culture, particularly the, the word lifestyle, right? Remember when lifestyle was sort of code for the LGBTQ community that was not welcome in other, other religious organizations. So when we say lifestyle, we're speaking to a very specific group of people who've been, been excluded, uh, often by religion in particular. So these are very meaningful words for us to use, and that's why I say them each Sunday. And of course, uh, this welcome is extended to everyone who hears me say it each Sunday, to those of you who are in the the room with us, those who, who uh, are usually here, those who might be visiting for the first time, you're equally as welcome and appreciated. And of course, the many of you who are streaming with us, we're uh, glad to know that you are with us as well. So welcome to one and all. We're glad to have you here. Before we greet one another, I wanted to also uh, say a little something about the, the terrible assassination attempt against Sir Salman Rushdie. I, I, uh, it may very well end up being an, a, a successful assassination attempt after, after a fatwa was uh, ordered on his life many decades ago now uh, and has not, never been rescinded. Salman Rushdie uh, is not, certainly not a Unitarian Universalist, at least not that I know of, but he represents the liberal tradition that our faith is rooted in, the tradition of freedom and reason and tolerance. And his, the assault against his life is an assault against all lives. And it is, assault, it is an assault against our own religion in particular. 
the, the only genuinely liberal religion in the country right now that is struggling to remain so. So I, I have so admired his courage uh, as, as a human being and to see this uh, brutal, brutal attack against him for no reason other than that he wrote a book that his detractors never even read. I know what that's like. And it saddens me to know that there are those in our own religion who, at least spiritually, behave that same way. So uh, I just wanted to open with a, an acknowledgement of the terrible attack on his life, but also the, the admiration that I think all of us have for him, the appreciation we have for Sir Rushdie, and uh, just hold him up in our, in our hearts, in our thoughts, in our prayers, whatever it is we do, to uh, wish the best for people when they need it most. And let's do take a few minutes this morning to greet one another. Uh, feel free to get up and walk around if you want. Say hi to those you look forward to, to, to meeting. Say hi to make some new friends today. And if you're visiting with us, of course, don't be too shy. Uh, we're a very friendly bunch. <laughs> Okay, more time to visit with one another during our social hour following the service, so please stay around for that. But let's move forward now by lighting our chalice, the symbol of our faith, the symbol of our unity and our solidarity, of our openness and our inclusion of our community and our individual uniqueness. May this small flame be our offering of warmth to those who are cold and alone and a light to those in darkness. May it be a flame that ignites justice in our world and a beacon of hope to those in need and may it reflect at least a spark of truth wherever truth has been lost and cast a healthy shadow of doubt wherever it's been found. As Unitarian Universalists, we have a goal in common with most of humankind, a lifelong search for truth and meaning. There are many paths towards discipline and self-awareness. 
which our former minister, Dr. William Harper Hauf, described in his 1989 book, Infinity in Your Hand. Today we're going to hear from Reverend Todd Eckloff about an interesting Japanese a practice, Aikido, which arose as a peaceful spiritual discipline in the 1920s while Japan was on a path towards authoritarianism, Pearl Harbor, and eventual defeat in World War II. There's a wide range of spiritual disciplines, as I'm sure you're aware, including meditation, which Hauf described as the quieting of the mind so that one can hear what is already there. Others he described are the Zen arts, including flower arranging and swordmanship, Native American rituals, Sufi dancing, journal writing, Jungian dream work, and Tai Chi, a martial art which Hauf practiced throughout his life. He writes that Tai Chi, if performed diligently, gives its practitioners the pliability of a child, the health of a lumberjack, and the peace and mind of a sage. In his summary of these powerful practices, Howe said it was his conviction that all persons interested in spiritual growth should have a discipline that is central to their daily life. Our first in-service hymn today is O Brother Son, 1066. Please rise as you are willing and able. We're now going to kindle our candles of care for those who are most on our hearts and minds this morning. I did not receive any specific request, but do want to begin as usual uh, um, with a candle on behalf of our brothers and sisters in the Ukraine, as well as the rest of that region of the world and others around the world who are being most impacted by the, the unnecessary violence going on there. And let's do take a moment of silence on behalf of others you might be thinking of, and as always, you're welcome to name them aloud at this time, if you'd like. Those named aloud and those embraced in our silence and all those who are suffering 
in the world at this time, we hold in our community with compassion. Now, before we move on, is anybody else hearing a noise? Yes. Definitely. Oh, good. Because I've heard it before, and I've said something, and nobody heard it, but you hear it. it sounds like birds, but it, yeah. I wondered if it, it was somebody's like, hearing aid. I, uh, could be. A hearing aid, or I thought maybe something in the kitchen. It's the most persistent bird. No, I think it's a, I think it's a machinery. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, invite, invite our ushers forward to take up this morning's offering, and I'll walk back there and see if I can figure out what it is, okay? Uh, so we now gratefully give and receive this morning's offering, which helps sustain this community and our mission to the larger world. Okay, I, I couldn't find it, but it seems to have stopped. Weird. I thought it was me. It seemed to be loudest wherever I was. <laughs> so it's time for our story for all ages. We don't have any little ones with us today to invite forward, but that's okay. I brought a little one of my own. An old friend that a lot of us know. This is, this is my, one of my favorite friends. This is uh, Winnie the Pooh. Can you say hello, Pooh? Hello. Hello. Thank you. Yes, you're a long way from the 100 Acre Wood. What brings you to Spokane today? The river. The river, you came to see the river? No, I was looking at a fellow in the water who looks very much like me. Yes. And I fell in and he carried me all the way to Spokane. <laughs> I see. I think that fellow might have been your own reflection, Pooh. Oh, Dother. Well, he got me all wet. Did he? But since I'm here, I thought I might as well come die and say hello, which I've already said, so there's no use saying it again. Well, that's probably true. Well, I'm glad you went with the flow, so to speak, because it's always great to see you, and it so happens I was thinking of you just this morning. You were? I was. Yes, I'm going to be speaking of... Aikido in a little while, and I was reminded of a book about you called The Tao of Pooh by Benjamin Hoff. I don't know not to doubt Aikido, but it reminds me a little bit of Kokido, which is one of my favorite foods next to honey. Yes, <laughs> cookie dough, I see. Well, everyone knows how much you like honey poo, but I was thinking of you today because of your connection with the philosophy of Taoism. Oh, you mean Doism? <laughs> no, no, not Doism. Taoism. It's a belief system from ancient China that says things that don't always make a lot of sense. Well, I say things that don't always make a lot of sense. Exactly. And one of my favorite examples is the song that you sometimes sing about Coddleston Pie. Do you remember it? Coddleston, Coddleston, Coddleston Pie. 
A fly can't dirt, but a dirt can fly. Ask me a riddle and I'll reply. Coddleston, Coddleston, Coddleston die. Very good. Then, you know, I think there's a couple of tra la la's and a rum tum tiddle um trum. Then you continue with Coddleston, Coddleston, Coddleston die. A fish can't whistle and neither can I. Ask me a riddle and I'll reply. Coddleston, Coddleston, Coddleston die. Very good, Pooh, even if I do say so myself. <laughs> Thank you, but what does it have to do with coquito and honey? Well, nothing and everything, I suppose. I'm confused as usual. Well, uh, that's okay because that's what Taoism is about and what the song you just sang is about. Well, I thought it might be, even though I don't know why. Well, not knowing the answer is the whole part of point of the song you just sang. It is? I mean, it is. Yes. And I, if I ask you, for example, what 2 plus 2 is, and you answer me with... Coddleston, Coddleston, Coddleston tie? Yes, it makes no sense, which can help me question what you might mean. And it's only by questioning that we come to understand things that we might not otherwise understand and discover new truths along the way. What do you think of that? Well, I think it's given me a headache. <laughs> Perhaps it's time I should be getting back to the hundred acre wood just as soon as I can find my reflection. Well, I'm not really sure where your reflection is right now, Pooh, but if you'll hang out until after our service, I know where we can find some cookie dough ice cream covered with honey. Then I'll help you back home. How does that sound? Coddleston, Coddleston, Coddleston tie. Very good. I think that was a yes. It's hard to follow Winnie, but <laughs> we're going to begin our silent meditation, so please relax, breathe deeply, and let us reflect on the words of poet William Blake. To see a world in a grain of sand and a heaven in a wild flower, hold infinity in the palm of your hand and eternity in an hour. I'm going to read just a couple of lines from uh, a collection of sayings by uh, Morihi Ueshiba, the founder of Aikido. This is a, a little book called The Art of Peace, which is one way to translate Aikido. I prefer to translate it the way of harmony, the path of harmony. I'm going to read two very brief sayings. To practice properly the art of peace, you must Calm the spirit and return to the source. Cleanse the body and spirit by removing all malice, selfishness, and desire. And be grateful for the gifts received from the universe, your family, mother nature, and your fellow human beings. 
And the second is just one sentence that I think is important for all of us to remember, particularly the utopians of our day and of our faith. Every sturdy tree that towers over human beings owes its existence to a deeply rooted core. I said after our first service, I always enjoy the Sundays when you're able to showcase your talent by providing our special music. And today proves the point how fortunate we are to have you with us on Sunday. So thank you so much. So as a, as a younger man in my 20s, 
I became a practitioner of Aikido uh, for several years until work and kids and other priorities prevented me from continuing. But I've never forgotten the basics of my training, although this assumption has never been put to the test and I don't expect it ever will, as far as some sort of physical altercation goes. But Aikido for me was, was never about learning self-defense. I was attracted to the philosophy of it, which, like its movements, is based on the natural rhythms and patterns of life. Learning Aikido does not require us to practice contorting our bodies into unnatural positions until we're able to do astonishing unnatural feats like jumping six feet in the air or breaking blocks of wood and concrete with our fist or running sideways up a wall and whipping our opponent with our long braided hair. <laughs> Aikido means to live in harmony with nature and its movements mirror the natural motions and positions all of us make as we go about our lives. Aikido training, therefore, more than a, is more about practicing what the body is already capable of than about learning new positions. Again, Aikido is often translated into English as the way of harmony, although the suffix uh, do refers to a place where something is practiced. So it could just as be easily be understood to mean the practice of harmony. And that's an insightful way to think about harmony, that harmony is something we practice. It's not necessarily a state that exists, but something we practice. As our species knows all too well, living in harmony with nature doesn't always come natural for us. Working instead to bend nature to our wills, we have created one of the worst and most threatening periods of mass extinction and climate change in Earth's four and a half billion year history. To be clear, nature itself is not always harmonious. Right? It's as much the nature of nature to either force species to adapt to its changes in rhythms and the various species to shape nature to suit their needs. Kali Ma is a goddess in Hindu mythology akin to our notion of Mother Nature, only instead of being purely creative, she also has a terribly destructive side. Hurricanes, tornadoes, earthquakes, forest fires, floods, droughts, plagues, diseases are among her many natural disasters. So sometimes Mother Nature works against us, and sometimes she works for us, and when she's working for us, and we're working for her, we are in harmony. Which is what's happening when we experience the calm and awe of being by the sea, or on a lake, or in the forest, or the mountains. And that is what Aikido is about. The practice of living in harmony with nature. Which is ultimately all that is. The normal Aikido stance, for example, is what is called hanmi. To stand with one's body slightly more forward on one side than the other, with the front foot cocked just a little outward for optimal balance, which comes easy to us because this is the normal way people stand. So when I approach the pulpit and I'm standing square with my feet right next to each other, that really is not very stable, right? But I have a pulpit. So if I fall, I can grab it. But normally when we're speaking, we're talking, this is the normal Aikido stance too. So during tra training, this is the stance that students face each other in, taking turns practicing a variety of moves, but all of its movements are really rooted in just four basic moves, all of which also represent these philosophical mindsets about living in harmony. So 
So standing in a natural position, when confronted by an opponent, enables to do so with poise, with calm, with balance, with groundedness, and with receptivity. This is how we stand when we're talking with each other, when we're visiting with each other. So as with Stoicism, such a position reminds us that resisting or running away or pushing back against life challenges is often futile and only makes matters worse. The hand me position, the natural position, which is the most comfortable and stable position to be in, is about meeting life's challenges, challenges by facing them with calm and poise and acceptance. That's the first lesson. And I'll talk about how Aikido's four basic moves or movements help us with what comes next once we approach life this way or stand ready for life in this way. Uh, after we've positioned ourselves well to face whatever's coming at us. But I, I want to mention something else about the philosophy of Aikido that sets it apart from other so-called martial arts. Although it is generally practice in a club with practitioners, the way of harmony is really a personal practice. It is self-discipline. It is about repeating these basic motions, not merely so that we can defend ourselves, if you will, if we were to get into an altercation, but so that our bodies begin to move in harmony with nature. And that beginning there, these principles seep also into our minds, into our psyche, so that we're able to live in harmony, both in body, in mind, and in heart. And this is why there are no Aikido tournaments in which participants compete against each other for titles or trophies. This is also why Aikido has only white belts and black belts, to discourage competition and ranking among students. For this reason, a student may still wear a white belt for after many years of practice. Nor is Aikido violent in its motions. Every move is meant to bring one's opponents back into harmony with nature. So in some self-defense systems, for example, students might learn to bend an attacker's hand backward, which is against nature, right? That's not how our hands naturally bend. In Aikido, the way of harmony, the wrist bends forward. And you would be surprised if you take hold of a wrist in this natural position, how gently you can help folks cooperate with the harmony of nature. As its founder, Master Morihi Uishiba, taught us, warriorship is none other than the vitality that sustains all life. And that the only enemy to defeat is the malice, selfishness, and desire within one's own souls and bodies. For as soon as you concern yourself with the good and bad of your fellows, he said, you create an opening in your heart for maliciousness to enter. Testing, competing with, and criticizing others weakens and defeats you. Morihi Uishiba was born in Japan in 1883 to a respected family. He was the great-grandson of a famous samurai warrior. And despite being an unusually frail child, he eventually became a national war hero himself. Having lived through both world wars, including the atomic bombing of his own country, Master Uishiba came to despise violence and to understand its futility. There are getting to be more and more in the military who are reckless and indiscriminate with their power, he lamented. They have forgotten the importance of helping people, of relieving suffering. A bunch of fools, they strut about displaying their violence, their narrow-mindedness, and wanton destruction of life. What idiots to go against nature. So he turned down a request from the Japanese military to train soldiers instead to become a farmer, having come to believe that cultivating plants is the purest form of Budo. Budo meaning martial art. The way of Budo, he said, is to put new life into the original universal life force which gives birth to all things. 
Harmony, love, and courtesy is essential to true Budo. But the people who are in power these days are only interested in playing with weapons. They misrepresent Budo as a tool for power struggles, violence, and destruction, and they want to use me toward this end? I'm tired of this stupidity. I have no intention of allowing myself to be their tool. I see no other way but to enter into retreat. Perhaps his greatest student, Satomi Sensei, who introduced Aikido to the U.S., also a World War II survivor, mirrored his master's sentiments when he said, abiding deep within his heart was the belief that the path of Budo is the path of compassion, that the task of a true samurai is to make the world fertile for peace and to protect all life. So Aikido translated as the way of harmony isn't about learning to fight, it is about learning not to fight. The way of harmony is invincible, Master Ueshiba said, because it contends with nothing. Aikido is also an outgrowth of Japan's pantheistic naturalism. Master Ueshiba practiced Shintoism, Japan's indigenous religion centering on the veneration of Kamiya, nature spirit, who was believed to dwell in all things. And this is why he retreated from war and violence into nature, and why he taught his students, those who practice the way of harmony must protect the domain of Mother Nature, the divine reflection of creation, and keep her lovely and fresh. Warriorship gives birth. Warriors give birth? Who are the warriors among us then? The mothers. Warriorship gives birth to natural beauty. The subtle techniques of a warrior arises as naturally as the appearance of spring, summer, autumn, and winter. Warriorship is none other than the vitality that sustains all life. He also said, now and again it is necessary to seclude yourself among deep mountains and hidden valleys to restore your link to the source of life. And he told his followers to create each day anew by clothing yourself with heaven and earth, bathing yourself with wisdom and love, and placing your heart, or I'm sorry, in placing yourself in the heart of Mother Nature. How's that for a way to start your day? The three Japanese characters that make up this word, Aikido, include I, which is the image of a group of people coming together under one roof, meaning something like harmony or balance or blending or peace. And Ki, the image of a stream or river bubbling up from a rice bed. Right? We often translate Ki to mean energy, but it's, it's energy rising up from a rice bed, meaning something like life force or breath of life or vitality. And then Do is the image of a man walking down the road, meaning something like path or way or art or practice. So this is what Aikido is. It is the path or art or practice of being in harmony or peace or balance with life, universal energy, Mother Nature. And it is because of this underlying philosophy that I still consider myself an Aikido practitioner and student, even though I have not been part of a club or practice its physical movements in many years. Because there's a saying in Aikido, wooden sword, metal sword, makes no difference. Right? Pretend sword, real sword, makes no difference. To understand this, it helps to know that all Aikido moves are actually based on samurai sword movements. Even though they don't use swords in practice, uh, each move is, is the move that would reflect somebody who does. To understand this connection, Aikido students do sometimes practice with a boken, holding a boken, which is a wooden sword. 
But the real point here is that Aikido is a spiritual practice. It's not about real sword fighting or even real fist fighting. The movements are meant rather to help our bodies connect with a deeper inner experience of being in harmony with nature, which includes the care and compassion of all beings and all of life. Having a real sword or a wooden sword or no sword at all makes no difference. Now the last time I practiced Aikido in a club was in 2008 when I hit the mat just the wrong way and injured my rotator cuff. And while healing I had a dream in which a merchant offered me my choice of whatever sword I wanted from his rare collection of priceless swords. After examining each one of them, the man was surprised that I only asked for a bokken. He recommended a beautiful, shiny, razor-sharp, double-bladed sword instead. Really, the wooden sword is fine, I said. That's all I need. After all, who am I ever going to fight? Uh, certainly not going to get in a sword fight with anybody. <laughs> And he seemed pleased with my decision, nodded in agreement, and handed me the boken. And I awoke from this dream and to my sore shoulder, realizing that my training days were over for good, but that I would continue the spiritual practice of Aikido the rest of my days. So with all of this as background, I'll now say a bit more about the four basic moves Aikido is based upon and how the philosophy behind them can benefit our lives in general. The first of these, once you have taken your proper stance of poise, stability, and openness, is called irimi. Irimi, and it means entering. Rather than avoiding or denying or fleeing the challenges before us, right, and there's a lot of that going on today, a lot of avoiding denying, or fleeing the challenges before us, Arimi seeks to overcome them by moving toward them instead of away from them. So if we back away long enough, we will eventually run out of energy and run out of space, and the challenge will catch up with us and defeat us. But if we walk right up to the challenger, then they need to back up a bit in order to reestablish some sort of really striking distance, some attack distance. And if we keep entering, re-entering that challenger, then the challenger must keep backing up until they run out of energy and run out of room. So we practice Irimi so that we develop a habit of not only accepting and facing the challenges before us, but of moving toward them. Right. So, so if you imagine, you know, a samurai, for example, and they have their, their samurai sword, and it has a long point, right? Well, the, sa the, the, the instinct is the safest, the safest Distance from that sword is just beyond its reach, right? Just beyond its point. So if the attacker moves forward, you need to move back. Right? And usually the sword would come up. You want to be just far enough back to when it comes down, you're not there. But again, if you keep backing up, in this case, you'd end up at those back doors before you're stopped. But if, on the other hand, you walk right in, there's no way the sword can get you. So the, the person holding the sword has to back up again, and then you walk in, and this, this keeps happening until your challenger is the one who's taken off guard. So a great example of this is when Ronald Reagan was running for re-election in 1984, there was a lot of concern, some of you may remember, expressed about his age. Reagan was ancient, you know. I mean, he was already 69 when he was elected in 1980. <laughs> the oldest president in history. 
at that point. And it was expected that his age would be brought up again during the 1984 debate with his Democratic challenger, Walter Mondale. But Reagan was ready for it and was asked if age was an issue in the election, now well seasoned in his 70s, the incumbent replied, I will not make age an issue in this campaign. I am not going to exploit for political purposes my opponent's youth and inexperience. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone in the audience, including Walter Mondale, broke into laughter. And that was the end of the age issue. And it was probably the moment Reagan cinched his re-election. It's walking right into it. Not denying it, but facing it. And he was able to turn that negative energy into something positive. That's Irimi, that's entering. Master Morihi Uishiba said, one should be prepared to receive 99% of an enemy's attack and stare death right in the face in order to illuminate the path. See, that's the path. The path is forward. Do not look upon the world with fear and loathing. Bravely face whatever the gods offer. Each day of human life contains joy and anger, pain and pleasure, darkness and light, growth and decay. Each moment is etched with nature's grand design. Do not try to deny or oppose the cosmic order of things. Be grateful for the hardships, the setbacks, and bad people. Dealing with such obstacles is an essential part of training in the way of harmony. Failure is the key to success. Each mistake teaches us something. Well, the second fundamental Aikido move is called Tenkan, which means turning. And this occurs when instead of directly confronting a challenger, one simply turns and ends up standing in the very same position as the attacker. And in the physical practice, this puts you in a, exactly a good position to throw your opponent off balance. Would you like to, to help demonstrate this, Pooh? Sure. <laughs> Let's see. What do you think? You want to practice a little Aikido? How about some Kokido? <laughs> well, well, we'll get there. Okay. So if, if, uh, if Pooh is coming at me, right, and I just shift... Now look, we're both looking in the same direction. I'm seeing things from Pooh's perspective. And that throws Pooh off guard just a little bit. All you have to really do is lightly touch his shoulder and he loses balance. It throws people off guard to look at things from their perspective when you're in a, in a disagreement. Right? Doesn't mean you have to agree, end up agreeing, but you can at least see their perspective without being threatened. So. Thank you, Pooh. You're welcome. <clears throat> He's a good sport. So more broadly, it reminds us of the value of remaining open to other people's positions, including to the real possibility of changing our minds if by seeing things from the other perspective, we come to agree. So Tenkan isn't just seeing, thing from, seeing things from others' perspective, it's being flexible. It means, as Master Ishiba said, Move like a beam of light, fly like lightning, strike like thunder, whirl in circles around a stable center. Does not mean being a pushover and not standing firm where our values are concerned, but it does mean being able to change positions and to consider the perspectives of others. Now the third move is called Shionagi. Shionagi. Which I think is just a beautiful word. I've always just loved it. It sounds like water flowing to me. Shionagi, the wind blowing. It translates into the four corner throws. The four corners throw. And like it sounds, it is, in practice, it is a move that takes an opponent off balance 
by quickly moving in one, what ends up being all four directions, moving in a 360. So again, it's important to remember that Aikido is not meant to injure others, but to discharge their har har harmful energy by redirecting it and hopefully bringing one's opponent back into harmony, harmony with the universe. Symbolically and psychologically speaking, Shionagi means more than just looking at things from your opponent's position, but looking at everything from every position. Many angles. Right? This is a way to move through the world, to enjoy lots of ideas, lots of ways of looking at things, and being open to the many people around the world and to their many different ways of being. It's about keeping an open mind and having a cosmopolitan attitude. Master Ishiba said, always keep your mind as bright and clear as the vast sky, the highest peak, the deepest ocean, empty of all limiting thoughts. For when we get locked into one way of looking at things, our religious viewpoint, our American viewpoint, our party's viewpoint, our personal viewpoint, we limit ourselves. We limit ourselves to other possibilities and to the nature of reality itself. And I believe, as such, we become delusional. So I'll show you what this move looks like. Again, if you imagine, every move is based on the motion of a samurai. So you, you always have, the samurai sword has a, a handle that requires two hands. So you're always balanced, right? You're always centered at your core. You don't, you don't, you know, you're not like a knight of uh, Arthur's table where you put your sword out and you get off balance and someone comes over and pit, touches your shoulder and you fall over. You're always about centering. So, so every move is really almost as if you have a sword. And this shionagi, this four corner turn, uh, is just one big spin. And if you imagine having a sword. So I'm going to show you, okay? And pretend I have a sword. Oh, actually, I use this as a sword, okay? I'm just going to show you right, right here so you understand the fluidity of this. Just like that. So you see I'm right back in the same position I was. I did this quick spin around. So it's, it's a sim symbol of really going around the world, of being open to all directions. Again, as Master Ishiba taught us, each and every master, regardless of our era and place, heard the call and attained harmony with heaven and earth. There are many paths leading to the top of Mount Fuji, but there is only one summit, love. See, that's the Shionagi. Many paths leading to the top of Mount Fuji, but there's only one summit, love. And this is why he also said, Aikido is the religion that is not a religion. It perfects and completes all religions. The way of harmony that I practice has room for each of the world's eight million gods and I cooperate with them all. The God of peace is very great and enjoins all that is divine and enlightened in every land. And this is why Shionagi is often said to be the true foundation of Aikido, the way of harmony. The one big move. Now the final move is Suoriwaza. Suoriwaza. And it refers to practicing all the Aikido moves that I've just talked about in a sitting position. <laughs> and in practice, Aikido, Aikido students accomplish this by moving about on their knees. But to me, this is like just Aikido's very own version of, of a philosophy that's in almost all religions, Wu Wei in Eastern thought, which means doing without doing, or the Jewish Sabbath, 
remembering the sacredness of rest and quiet and stillness, or the Buddhist practice of sitting and meditating, or Christianity's doctrine of grace, which says there's nothing you must do or can do to be saved. Ultimately, you must forget about technique, Master Uishiba said. The further you progress, the, f the fewer teachings there are. The great path is really no path. So these are the habits Aikido practice, practitioners practice. Facing what is before us. Moving toward our challenges. Looking at things from the challenger's perspective. Being open-minded and inclusive of others. And stillness. To me, this is a great recipe for living life, and it is why I still consider myself a practitioner and student of Aikido, and why I believe any of us can put the way of harmony into practice. Thank you. Uh, before we sing our final hymn, I just want to put in a plug to ask if there are any instrumentalists who would like to work with our music program. Um, we often like to have people accompany the choir, or you could do a solo or a duet with somebody. Um, it's nice to have variety up here, and so if you are interested, talk to our um, music director, Deb, when she is back from vacation. And our final hymn is 1031, May You Be Filled With Loving Kindness. And we'll sing it three times. The first one is for yourself. The second one is for each of us. And the third one is for all of us together. Please rise if you're willing and able. As we depart today, I leave you with words from the Passover Haggadah. May the light we now kindle inspire us to use our powers to heal and not to harm, to help and not to hinder, to bless and not to curse, to serve you, spirit of freedom. Amen. Blessed be. Salam Aleikum and Shalom. Mm -hmm.